inside. I'll ask his forgiveness as I knelt to pray. And if I could repay, I'd be only too willing. Died on the cross just to save us from sin. There's a light guiding me. I can see heaven's glory. And it holds me steadfast to his way and his love. And it's guiding me through temptation and light guiding me to that heaven above. When that great day comes and I see heaven's glory I know that my soul will be free from all care. Then they'll open the gates. And they'll bid me to enter. When the rose called of yonder, I pray to be there. There's a light guiding me. See heaven's glory, and it holds me steadfast to his way and his love. It's guiding me through temptation and evil. There's a light guiding me to that heaven above. There's a light guiding me. I can see heaven's glory. And it holds me steadfast to his way and his love. It's guiding me through temptation and evil. There's a light guiding me that
in so many ways, you have to like one way. <laughs> this year, honestly, I just can't wait until that 2020. I just couldn't wait until it's gone. <laughs> now, I'm going to talk a little bit, and then I, I think I've already been moved from where my wife does a tremendous job on the computer, gets my things ready for me. I'm going to have a few scriptures up there that's going to be on the screen. But in 2021, where were you at? end of 2020 that you feel like you need to draw closer to God in 2021. We'll go to the first scriptures here today. First of all, I want you all to remember one thing, that there's nobody perfect in our church. Amen. 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 I want you to remember that. For we have all sinned, including this pastor, and come short of the glory of God. Amen. How many of you have never sinned out there? Raise your hand. Oh, there's one. i got to go talk to them. Never sinned in their lives. Wow. I'm going to come and talk to you after service. Amen. Because I need that. Amen. But I know one thing, that if you have sinned, yes. we've got a God, if you can ask Him, He will forgive you. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Next scripture. Well, I was still out in that world in 2020, and many of, of you have been, you were out there. And I've had people come to me and tell me, Pastor, I have done so many things wrong. Yes. So haven't we all? Yeah. Amen. And we wish we could have looked back. But we can't. We gotta go forward. Amen. Yeah. We gotta get ready and go forward 2021. And I'm expecting revival in the church in 2021. Amen. Amen. I'm not the kind of pastor if we have to go out there on the blue dots in zero weather. We will go out on the blue dots in zero weather and we'll get some salamander heaters and we will heat you up. Amen. 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 The reason I'm concerned is many churches today in Delaware are not open. Right. Yes. Absolutely. I can name a number that just aren't open. And I'm concerned because when you're a young Christian, you got to have the word of God. Amen. you got to get in there. And you know what? I know we got we got to wear our masks. I know we have to use our sanitizer. I know we got to have our distancing. That's why our pews are pulled up behind one another. Is you got six feet this week and six feet unless you're under the same roof. But God committed His love toward us to what? We were yet sinners. Christ died for us. Now I don't know how the, about you all, but it gets to me. When I think about a Lord that never had sinned, would go to a cross bearing my sins in from my life, and he bared them on his back, crucified, so that one day when my life is finished, and one of these days it's going to be finished here, my work will be done here, and guess what? I've got a promise because of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm eternal life. To be with all the family that's went on and beat us up there. How many of you have got family that's waiting on you on the other side? Amen. How many of you can't wait to see them again? Amen. I don't know about you all, but the first one i got to go to is Jesus. Amen. And get down on my knees and thank Him for doing that for me. A sinner lost. Amen. Go on next to Scripture. There was a time in my life that I had to make a decision. Many in 2020, you may have tried. You've tried everything but Jesus. 
You've tried the, the things of the world. They just haven't satisfied the needs in your life and in your heart. Kathy, I remember that first time you walked in this church. God got a hold of Kathy. And now she doesn't hardly ever miss unless she's out of town or going away. But she found someone that loved her, would stick with her, help her, watch over her. His name was Jesus. Amen. 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 Why do all these kids, be, you know, we were buddies, you know, young. He always says, Pastor Donnie, he said, we should have, I should have went your route. Instead of the one that I took. But I looked at him one day and I looked her up quietly right in the eye, but I said, I've got something for you. You may have come a different route than I did when I got in church. But there is a testimony in your life for those that have went through things that you've been there and you can help them get through and find Jesus in their lives. Yes. Amen. 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 I knelt down and asked Jesus to forgive a sinner like me. And I believed in my heart that God had, had raised Jesus from the dead. The Bible tells me, Thou shalt be saved. Amen. Not maybe, possibly, but thou shalt be saved. I hadn't got home very long last night after service. Blue Box family got a hold of me. Her mama went on to be with Jesus. Thank God. Now I want to tell you, the only way that I can do this is because I know the ones that have believed and asked forgiveness and is going to a better place than, than we are today. They don't have to wear no mask in heaven. They ain't got to keep washing their hands in heaven. That's gone, man, oh man. They're having a the time of their lives. Amen. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation, brother Eric. Right. There's a change in 2021. How about you making a change in your life? Amen. But the beautiful thing about I love about our church here, we don't come to you. No. It's your choice. You can do what you want. You can either reject Jesus or you can accept him, come to him, and watch what he does in your life that you've been needing and give it a try. I say give it a try. Amen. Take an orange. I keep telling you, take an orange when you're in the supermarket. You don't know whether it's sweet or sour. Until you pick that orange up and you peel that orange and you take a bite. Until you take a bite of the love of Jesus, you don't know what you're missing. It's sweet. Amen. It's sweet. And I can just think of folks today that have tried everything in the world, but they're looking for something to help them. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I was reading it. I'm going to go into a couple other scriptures right now. Just leave that right there. Because I went to something I, I want you all to understand. That as a pastor, as a pastor, you've got something on your mind that God has given you. Now I want you all to understand that there will come a time in your life when you will need help. There will be a time when physical ailments will come our way. There will be a time when we're, we're, what are we going to do? How are we going to get help? I can't help but think about a man that was in a bed and he couldn't get to the one that could help him. And there were some friends that wanted to get, get him to Jesus. 
Jesus. I want to get you to Jesus today. I want you to have Jesus in your life. So in the first Sunday of 2021, I want you to know that you've got Jesus with you. Amen. And Mark is not up there, and I Sherry. I'm sorry, she spends a lot of time for me. But there were some folks that came to Capernaum. There was noise that Jesus was in this house. But they had a friend that had a, a need, health-wise, but they had heard all that Jesus could do. And they wanted to get him to Jesus. I'm telling you, I don't know if I'm going to get through this or not, because God is moving in this church, and I can feel his spirit moving in people's lives. I can feel that God is touching people that have tried everything. But they don't know Jesus yet. And straightway, many were gathered together so much that there was no room to receive it. They brought a man in his bed. And they got him there. And it says, not, not so much as they, uh, about the door as he preached the word unto them. He was preaching. Jesus was preaching about God. But there was this man that brought, he couldn't, you know, they didn't have things like we do, wheelchairs and such. They had, they just got him in his bed. Amen. And they picked him up, a bunch of friends, got him a hold of him, and got, get him to Jesus. But I have a friend that didn't need. I used to laugh. Man, I used to have friends, you know, I worked, and, you know, and they used to laugh. You're missing out on all the fun out there, preacher. You remember, man, you know, right before I got saved, I was getting into some things. Why, he knows, but that's all right. I got, I got saved just in time. But I worked at, at night. we go in at 3 a.m., get off at noon. I'm on these semis and things, and, and I thought about these old boys that night. I got saved. Saved, there was a change in my life. I had a caring. I wanted people to have good lives, children to live in good homes, have toys for Christmas, have food to eat. There was a change in the preacher's life. Amen. Brother John. And straightway they brought this man with palsy. Paralyzed, brought him to wanting to get him in that house to see Jesus. And I want you all to understand that those folks that I worked with that always tell me what they had done on Friday nights, Saturday nights, and oh, but every one of them says, I have a bad headache this morning. I said, Well, how many of you are under the commode or over the commode that night? But what I wanted to know is there was one that got a hold of me that changed me from the inside out. Yeah. One that had made a difference in the preacher's life. I got excited, but I, I always tell them after I got saved, I said, you, have, you old boys, you get out there and you try to drive and you're under the influence, you call me and I will come and get you out of the wherever you may be. My grandma just called beer joints. One night, about 1.30 in the morning, before we went in at 3 a.m., guess what? I got a call from one of these guys. Said, you ain't having no fun anymore. You ain't going to be around anybody. You know, they said, you ain't having. Well, I tell you what, all the way down there, down there, right down here, down the street here. First of all, I was looking around to see if any of the church was around, around there when I was going in. And then... And then, guess what? I prayed all the way that God would make him sick. <laughs> he was so stoned, he didn't know where he was or who he was with. Yes. As we come out of that door, man, he was heaving. Oh, my God. But Lord, don't let him get 
get sick in my car. <laughs> and praise God, I got him in the house. Man, I could hear his wife getting all over him. I said, good night, goodbye. <laughs> For this, but the beautiful thing was, in a few years after this happened, this individual would give his life to Jesus Christ. Amen. He saw that there was a difference. He saw that there was a joy. He saw that he, he was watching my life. Later, he said, I was watching you to see how long you stood in there from where you were. I was going to watch you. One time, a bunch of peaches. We had these big old things, peaches, in the warehouse. I hadn't been saved very long. And all of a sudden, one of them big old cases, 24 cans of peach, fell right on my toes. Four guys were looking to wait to see what I was going to say. And I said, Jesus, hold my lips. And thank God he did. And then I thank him all the time. But the beautiful thing is, what the scripture says, first when I got in there, whosoever will believe with him shall not be ashamed. Man, I'm not ashamed to stand up for Jesus Christ. For there is no difference between the Jews and the Greeks and the Gentiles. For the same Lord over all is original to all that call upon him. You call on him, ask him to come into your life. And I want you, I'll tell you what, I'll, I, I just know, I've never seen no one yet tell me they wish they'd never gotten saved. I've never, and I've been preaching 40, 44 years now. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, Brother Darrell, shall be saved. Brother Eric, there's no doubt in your life. You know Jesus saved your soul. You know you're going to have it from him. Praise Jesus. My, oh my, my. But then straight away they were gathered together getting into, into Jesus. And they had, they had a bed with this sick friend with him. And when they could not come nigh to him for the press, there were so many people there listening to Jesus. They had covered the roof. Where he was. When they had broken it up, they let down the bed where in the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith going, if we can only get it to Jesus, if we can only get our friend that we love. You know, I, I was thinking over in 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Hope, faith, charity, and the greatest is charity. And I was thinking about these guys loved this friend so much. And the way the world is today, the COVID-19, everything's going crazy. Everywhere you look, people are discouraged, depressed, anxiety. It's bad, folks. We're losing a lot of folks. It's suicide because of all the anxiety, the depression around the COVID-19. Yeah. we got to pray. Amen. But there was a change in the preacher's heart when I got saved. I love people. Amen. These friends loved this man that was on that bed and had palsy. They uncovered the roof and they took the shingles off the roof. Where Jesus was in Mark chapter 2 and verse 4. When they had broken it up, they let down the bed. They made it big enough so they could get that bed down to Jesus from the roof. Down with that one that had palsy. When Jesus saw their faith, he said on the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Yeah. He saw their faith in him. He believed in Jesus. How many of you believe that Jesus could do all things? Yeah. My scripture 
tells me in Luke 137, nothing is impossible with God. Oh, I feel his presence here. I feel God moving here. I tell you what, it's been a heck of a week. Brother Larry's mom passed. And Brother Dan passed. And Lou's mom passed. And but all I kept thinking, Lord, what a New Year's. Those folks that already went up there are having today. A new beginning. Eternal life in heaven. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, your son's sins shall be forgiven. I remember when I got saved, all the things from my past was forgiven. There was a load off of my back. There was joy in my life. I had a smile. I was positive. Before I was saved, I wasn't that positive. But now I'm positive. I believe what I believe. I believe what I read. I believe the Bible from Genesis to Revelations. That's the Word of God. Today, churches are not reading the Word of God to tell the people the truth. They're not being honest with the people. This is the Word of God. I can't take out what I don't like and preach what I like. i got to preach the truth. There's no difference between the Jews and the Greeks for the same Lord over all. It's rich unto them that call upon it. All people, I don't care if you're black, white, yellow, red, whatever your color is, our God loves us the same. Amen, amen, amen. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then I tell you what, I was thinking about they got him down there. There are certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why do it? This man speak blasphemies. I mean, there's always somebody says, he can't do that. All right, he's wrong. You know what? I learned something a long, long time ago. I know who I believe. I know that one has never let me down. 40 some years of my Christian life. Amen. I know these. I've seen, I've watched, I know, I know, I know. Brother Dale, when you helped in my service, you and Thorsel and Eric, all of you. Whenever that time would come, you better make sure all of you, this preacher is in heaven. This preacher is rejoicing, honey. This preacher will be waiting with his arms out at the gate. This preacher loves you. This preacher wants you saved in heaven. That's my life. Amen. See one more soul saved for Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Who doeth this man speak? Blasphemy. Man, these people were always on Jesus. They used to get on to him because he, he would eat with the sinner. Jesus would eat. They tried to talk to him about God. Well, I'll tell you what, I talk to a lot of people. I talk with people, man, if you get up to them, I tell you what, I just about think I got drunk just by talking to them. Amen. But you know what, I still love them. Amen. You know what, they're still welcome. Yeah. You know what, they can still come and sit down in this church and I, they won't be kicked out, I promise you that. We've all sinned to come the glory of God. We've all sinned. But these friends love this man so much. My, I pray this upcoming year, we just get a hold of each other and love each other. We can't, I'm a hillbilly man from all men. I tell you, I just want to hug everybody. Amen. It's so hard sometimes, or sometimes yes. you want to shake yes. hands and you're, you're kind of like, uh, it, yes. Does he want it? Knuckle ball, or does he want to shake hands? But there were certain scribes sitting there and making fun pretty much, blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God? Only oh, here's Jesus, God's son. And they were saying, He can't do this. I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of people that says that God can't do things. But I'm going to tell you now, you may have been a black sheep of a family, but God Almighty, you are his masterpiece when you're saved. Amen. You are his masterpiece. The Bible says we are his workmanship. Workmanship.
purpose should be going into scriptures means master beat. I, I preached the midweek and I was talking about a lot of people that I meet are older and, I, and they're at their house and they feel like the four walls are coming in because of COVID and a lot of depression. Yes, yes. And I looked at them and I said, you ever go to an antique store? What kind of prices do you find on that one of the kind? High, high prices. Well, is it worth something? Yes. Is it valuable? Yes. Has it went through a lot of things over the years? Yes. You can call me an antique anytime you want to. saying, 
You never saw it on this flesh. Right. There was a change. Jesus, they had never seen anything like this. I've had some of my friends get saved and I have to look, get, take a double take. Because I didn't know they could speak the same language I did. <laughs> All of a sudden I talked to them and, how are you doing? Got saved. Amen. Amen. I want you all to stop today, first Sunday of 2021. Yeah. How about turn it over to God? Yes. How about giving it to Jesus? Yeah. How about starting off right for 2021? Yeah. How about letting people know that you're saved, born again? You want to be a child of God. You're a child of God. You want to be rooted. You want to get strong. You want to help others. You want to be a friend to others. You've got to love each other. That's right. We're going to get a song of invitation right now. Yeah. If there is one of you that doesn't know Jesus as your Savior, if there is one of you that is struggling, if there is one of you that is hurting, I want you to know. As I come down there, we will never come to you. That's your choice. But I will meet you if you walk out of your seat to come up and pray. Oh. 